The Bible says, the angel with the key, the key of the bottomless pit, arrested the great dragon and locked him up. There is a key you need to lock up every dragon boasting against you. The Bible talks about the key of the house of David. Keys. Keys to give you breakthrough. Keys to open closed doors. Keys to possess your possession. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? My Father! Give me my keys! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and ask for the key. The key, the key. My party at the Catholic Telaka. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, Lord, open our understanding. Teach us directly from your feet. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a see God bless you. You are welcome once again to the school on Sunday. Welcome to the school of Sunday. If you are here in this service and you have been blessed in this program school on Sunday, can I hear you shouting loud hallelujah? Again, various questions here to answer. And like I've been saying, we're going to devote a Sunday to looking at all these unanswered questions here. Many times I've asked my relations to turn their decoder to MFM channel during Power Must Change Hands, but it's another program they see. On the channel that you have at home, you cannot observe Power Must Change Hands live unless recorded programs. That's what we have there. If we need to use it for live programs, we have to inform in advance, inform our providers in advance. But if your relatives have access to computers and they have internet, all our programs there are streamed worldwide. And people watch Palm of Strangers in at least 82 nations. That's where how they are looking at it. Why is it that Yoruba programs are not printed by the Palm of Strangers? We do, maybe we don't print enough. So we allow them to print enough. Or you ask the ushers, you want Yoruba. Those are questions that are here. So I came to the prayer city with an anchor yesterday, and I cut it into about four pieces, because I intend to take it to my father and mother's family company, the village, and also have it in my own residential room. The question is whether this is allowed. You can cut it to as many pieces as you want and distribute to as many places as you want. So how can I love my husband when he's shouting on everybody at home? It's a serious matter. The truth is this. And it's a very harsh truth indeed. And if you are a man here, you better listen very carefully. If you are a tiger in the house, you don't play with your children, you don't talk to them, you don't, you don't talk to anybody, you are screaming and shouting and even beating their mother in their presence. You better pray that you don't grow old. Because when you get to 80, 82, if you, are sitting, if you get to 80, 82, by the time those children you are shouting on disappear from your house, they will not come back to look after you. Pray not to get old if you are like that. Because the one you are beating their mother in their presence, you are shouting on everybody, you are mortgaging your destiny. And that woman you are beating before them, those children, they are recording it in a place that cannot be cleaned up from their memory forever. And there is no use saying the woman is not disciplined, I want to discipline her. And then you two women get a very nice padlock and fix it on your mouth. Because it's on record. That women who don't talk are hardly beaten up. So the mouth, sometimes it's a magnet of beating. I didn't say anything. He has been talking, uh, excuse me sir, he has been talking this morning. He talked, 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 talked. Talk. The man talked, talked, talked for three hours. The woman did not say one word. 
Then the woman spoke only one word. She said, I don't blame you. You resemble your father. One word. She said, That's all I said. And he started beating me. The one word that she said, as counsel all the three hours, the man has been talking. Please, sir, I'm a self employed person and I close late at times. It leads me to eat very late at night. Is this very good to eat late? It's not very good to eat late. How can I know whether I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The initial evidence is speaking in tongues. And other things follow. If a non-member wants to pay his first food offering, can he pay it to MFM or can he pay it in his own church? That non-member should listen to the Holy Spirit. What, whatever the Spirit of God asks him to do, he should do it. If my profession as a woman necessitates that I wear trousers, what can the Christian do in this situation? Use the trousers inside that profession. Put it in the bag. It's work clothes. And then change back when you finish. If my husband love his mother, brother, and sister more than he love me and my children, what can I do? You better get on your knees and start praying. The prayer, prayer is the only answer. Prayer is the only answer. Fighting will not solve it. Grumbling, complaining will not solve it. It's prayer. If you are the person who wrote that your wife ran away with your driver, can you see us after the service, please? Praise the Lord. Normally, women do not run away from where they are being loved and pampered. Is that a lie? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. What is the Bible stand on Valentine's Day? Listen. Listen carefully. A lot of pagan festivals they have quietly crept into Christianity and we are busy celebrating it. Whereas the Bible says we should not have anything to do, to do with it at all. There are many things in Christianity now that was just smuggled into it, was never part of it from the beginning. One of them is Valentine's Day. One of them is Christmas. One of them is Easter. All those things just crept in cleverly. And Christians accepted it. They were pagan festivals before. Take the issue of February 14, when people celebrate Valentine's Day. It is actually a day they used to celebrate one god, or goddess of the Roman Empire. They call the goddess Juno Februata. Juno Februata is a Roman goddess of sexual passion. When they want to celebrate that thing in Rome, and I'm sure you know too that the root word for Rome is where we got romance. When they want to celebrate this Juno Februata meeting on February 14th, men and women will gather in a place and they will pick ballot on who you sleep with. The men will write their names. The women will write their names. They will scatter the paper. And everybody will pick who he will sleep with. Just like that. Most of the people, you've never met them before in your life. That is what they were celebrating that time. Before one Pope now took it and made it something so popular. Is this the kind of thing that Christians should be celebrating? The love that the Bible talks about is not the love where they fire an arrow into that heart. Any love where they are firing an arrow into your heart. It's not love, it's lust. Now, Valentine. Valentine was a priest. So we read. And the government warned him. The emperor warned him. That he should not be doing marriages for young young men. Because he felt that the marriages the man was conducting was disturbing people from going into the army. Valentine did not listen. He kept conducting the weddings. So they killed him February 14. While they locked the Valentine up in jail, he fell in love with the jailer's daughter too. Even in his prison cell. 
And so when he was about, they were about to go and kill him, he wrote a letter to the lady. And he wrote at the bottom, Your Valentine. This is how this thing started. And it crept in. And people are now celebrating it. Take Christmas for example. Nobody knows on which day Christ was born. The 25th of December that we celebrate it now. That day was the day people worshipped the sun. And they have special services dedicated to those who pray to the sun. During that sun festival, people generally gather and drink themselves down. They have a good time. Animals were slaughtered in that day. So the origin of this 25th celebration is in pagan idol worship. Jesus was not born on December 25th. The Bible says, And there were shepherds watching over their flocks at night in the open field when Jesus was born. No shepherd would come out in December in an open field. In those parts of the world, it's very cold. It's winter. So, and the Bible makes it very clear. According to the Jewish calendar, Mary conceived in September when Elizabeth was already six months pregnant. That means Elizabeth conceived in April and John the Baptist was born in December. Mary was three months pregnant when Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. So, by simple calculation, to follow Luke chapter 1 verse 26, Jesus was not born in December but in June. And this boxing day we celebrate too. It doesn't mean boxing by hand. It just boxes that we put money for the poor. It was something to celebrate one St. Stephen's Day that became that one too. Easter. Easter really is not the Easter we call it. The correct name is Easter. Easter is, is the name for the Queen of Heaven. And so, much, so many things are crazy like this. But we do not criticize those who celebrate. But it's good to point out why we don't regard it so much. It's because the origin of it is steeped in deep idolatry. I hope I've answered the Valentine question, man. So don't send Valentine card to your wife. Don't send Valentine message to anybody. If you do, you are writing a letter to the spirit of lust which may create great problems for you later. May the Lord open our understanding. A louder amen. amen. Let's take our Bibles as we go into what we are going to study for today. And I want you to listen again very, very carefully. Listen very attentively. God is a God that answered prayer. But there are many situations that will arise. And a person will call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord will say, what, what, do, what do you mean by you are calling my name in your mouth? Why are you calling my name? In that your mouth? That your mouth? You are calling my name in that your mouth? One of the reasons why you can cancel your own prayers is what we are discussing now. I call it the tragedy of lies. The tragedy of lies. Tragedy of lies. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. So if God calls your mouth a mouth of abomination, how do you think you will use that mouth to pray and God will answer you? Say, lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. In John chapter 4, Gospel according to St. John chapter 4, I read from verse 20. Two. John 4, 22. The tragedy of lies. I'm praying for somebody here. That whatever is inside of you that is driving heaven to come down into your soul, whether you like that thing or not, the Almighty will evacuate you from your life this morning in the name of Jesus. John 4, 22. If you are there, say yes. You worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father 
in spirit and in what? In truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. Now, in the same John, chapter 8, we have a dangerous passage. A very terrible verse of scripture, which many people don't take seriously. But the fact that you are not taking a Bible portion seriously does not mean that heaven does not take it seriously. And the Bible does not bother about your opinion. You can have any opinion you want. If your opinion is that the sun will not come out tomorrow, that's your problem. It will come out and you will see. John chapter 8, verse 44. 8, 44. It says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. So the father of every liar is the devil. If we are telling lies, we are doing the devil's work for him. This is a serious problem in Christianity. It is not in vain that God wrote, They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Those are the kind of people God is looking for. Truth is a powerful entity. How far down the wrong road you have gone never makes it a right road. That you were born into a way and that you have traveled that way all your life never makes it right. The caliber of human beings traveling a wrong road does not make the road right. Time never changes truth. Truth is truth. Truth cannot be decided by majority votes. How many associates you have on the wrong road does not make the wrong road right. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth will either bless you or shake you. Shake you. Truth is firm. Truth is immutable. Truth is eternal. And every battle you fight, listen to this, every battle you find against the truth, you will lose it. It may take a while. But if the battle you are fighting is against the truth, you will lose that battle. Truth is very stubborn. It can never die. Those who spoke the truth may die, but the truth can never die. The first scientist to say, this world is like a circle. This world is like a circle. Because that time, what was believed is that the world is flat and that you can walk, 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 walk. You get to the end of the world where you fall down. The man said, the thing is like a circle. I think they killed that scientist. When I said they are bothered to read the Bible, they will have read that God said the world is a circle. Although they killed the man, but the truth is said did not die. It still remains alive to today. That is why, wherever truth is present, God is there. If it's truth, oh, God is there. No matter whether the person speaking the truth is a non-believer or a believer or an idol worshiper, if it's the truth, God is there. But when you are lying, lying is always afraid of examination. But the truth invites examination. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Whatever happens, beloved, the truth shall always prevail. You may run for years with your lies, or the truth will catch you up in one day. I was sharing at the same goose meeting that this beautiful girl who comes to church, but a serious hypocrite. She has a brother, she, wants to, she says she will marry in the church. She has a boyfriend, she goes about in the school. So she's double dating, lying, lying to this, 
lying to that, lying to this, lying to that. And this is a serious matter. This mobile phone that has come now has increased the number of people going to hellfire. Somebody is sitting beside another man's wife and he said, We are working late in the office. I shall be coming home late. We are working late. Somebody is inside the toilet in his house. I said, I'm on my way. I'm on Third Milan Bridge. I'm coming. All liars. They are abomination to the Lord. And the devil is their father. There is no small lie. Lying is lying. So this sister, because you cannot, there is no clever liar. You will shoot yourself at the back one day. She wrote two letters. One letter to the brother in church. Dear brother, God bless you in Jesus' name. Calvary Christians. I enjoyed the message last Sunday. And thank you for the prayer meeting. And for your prophetic utterance upon my life. I'm back in school now. Keep praying for me. God bless you. That was a letter for the brother in church. She wrote a second letter to her boyfriend in school. Hi, love. Golden day. We had a nice time at that, at that night club. I'm looking forward to us going back there again. Simple letter. But when she wanted to post the letter, she made a holy mistake. She posted the simple one to the brother in church and posted the, the godly one to her sinner friend. That was why all the lies she has been telling blew into the open. Hear me and hear me well. Anything you know that you will be highly embarrassed if I should carry it and begin to read it to the congregation that you did, don't do it. Jesus said, what a man is saying under his bed, under the bed. On the last day, the person who will be proclaiming it will be on rooftop. And those things you have been hiding from people. Everybody will know that you must obey. Everybody will know that you are deceiving your wife. Everybody will know you are a liar. It's a broadcast. The time to stop is now. Judgment meets you the way death meets you. We can gather with, with the, in the place where people have died and we say, may they are so rest in peace. It's a lie. Once he didn't live well, he is not dying well. The Bible says, it's given unto man to die only once. After that, judgment. That's what the Bible says. So, immediately you shut your eyes in death, you either land in hellfire or in paradise. There is no middle camp. There is no purgatory or standing camp anywhere. Truth is tough. It will not break. No matter what you say. If you are against the truth, then you have the whole of the universe power working against you. And whoever you are, no matter how big you are, any time the truth is blocking your way, then you are heading towards the wrong direction. You better do a reverse. No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, it doesn't change the truth. You crush the truth to the head, it will rise again. You ignore the truth, it doesn't kill the truth. Four boys, they were in a car going to school. They went, they told the driver, take us to a party. The driver took them to somewhere, they enjoyed themselves. And they were going very late to school. They had planned what to say to the teacher. So when they got to school, they said, sorry, sorry sir, we came late. We know we were supposed to arrive at 8 a.m. We got here 12 midday. It's because we had a flat tire. The teacher said, you had a flat tire? He said, it's okay. See me one by one. He brought in the first person. Which tire? Is it front tire or back tire? That one said back tire. He stay here. Number two, come sir. You lost the tire? Say yes, sir. Front or back? He said front. Brought in the third person. Which tire? It was clear that it was a lie. They now called them together. But you see? They then admitted they were lying. That's why... It's not good to tell lies. It can be very embarrassing when they discover you're a liar. It's very embarrassing. Well, and then people stop trusting you when they know that you're a liar. Truth is always the strongest argument. And truth never dies. Our ancient father told us that no matter how fast lies travel, the truth will catch it up. If you have members of your family in government, you better appeal to them. Don't go with lies. Stay with truth. Because truth, you can't fight the truth. It's a lion that will fight for itself. Truth is truth. 
Even if everyone is against it. Lie is lie. Even if everyone is supporting it. That's what I used to advise people. So be ready at all costs to hold fast to the truth. Prefer to lose your situation than to tell a lie. Yes. Prefer to lose your situation than to tell a lie. We have situations before us that we sometimes grapple with at our marriage committee. A man has had children outside. Then he wants he's, he's married a new wife without telling that new wife that he already had children outside. The new wife now discovers that this one has had children somewhere before and she is not willing to go on with the marriage. It's better to tell the truth. Be willing to go into the fiery furnace than to worship the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Run the risk of being poor instead of becoming rich because of lying. All wealth accumulated by untruth Falsehood lies with certainly collapse. And it will backfire on the children and the children's children. I, I didn't get money to send my, my, my children to school. So, so I, 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 I did small, small prostitution to send them to school. That kind of finance that you are used to finance your children will backfire on them. Do not build your life on a lie. Many, many years back, when I was in my former church, many years ago, a woman had a baby. And the hospital wanted her to bring 5,000. She didn't have the 5,000. And so the hospital locked her up. They are not discharging you until you pay. And the naming ceremony was getting close. What did she do? One day, she took the baby, put the baby inside a large nylon bag, put rubbish on top of the baby, and told the nurses she wanted to go and throw this into the dustbin. And the nurse just looked and saw dirty things, paper, paper, all kinds of things there. Nothing that was a baby inside. This was how this woman escaped from the hospital. The story. That, that boy had grown to become an adult man. And he is seriously in debt. The life of his mother was backfiring on his life. If a person can sit down and you decide to cheat... Decide to lie, then you are a rotten human being. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If your tithe is 10,000 naira and you bring 2,000, you are a liar. And those who lie in scripture, you can see what happened to them. Lying is terrible. Many years ago, I was invited to the invite of Lagos by the students, and my topic was how to pass your examination without cheating. How to pass your examination without cheating. That was the topic they gave to me. So when I got there that morning, I greeted them very well. And I offered sincere apologies that they should allow me to change my topic to how to cheat in examination without passing. So I was telling them, so you know what? You want to cheat? Keep cheating. Cheat very well, but it will backfire. When it will backfire on you, this is what will happen. Without truth, you cannot call yourself a worshipper of Jehovah. When truth begins to decay, it becomes a lie. A lie is a deliberate, untrue statement with the intention to deceive. A deliberate, untrue statement. With the intention to deceive. May the Lord deliver his people from lying lips. In the name of Jesus. Your mouth is your compass. Your mouth is your destiny. If you are using that mouth to tell lies, it will backfire. Perhaps as you are sitting here this morning, your own is white lie. White lie. The lie of Ananias and Sapphira. They brought offering. But they didn't bring everything. They brought some of it. And they said, we have brought offering. White lie. An untrue statement that appears harmless and unimportant. They call that white lie. A lie in which the person telling it is even feeling justified that he has done the right thing. That is what we call half truth. 
Half truth is the kind of lie Abraham told. Is this lady your sister or your wife? She said, she is my sister. And it is true. The lady was his sister. But he was also his wife. But he purposely just hid behind her and said, my sister. There is deception. You intentionally go out to deceive others. You are giving two different parties, two different impressions. There are people, we call them pathological liars. They are composite liars. When they open their mouth, it's lie. If they say it is raining, better look for something to protect you against the sun. This is a serious matter. You can lie through deception, through omission. Omission. I remember when we got here in 94, we wanted to construct benches for the church here. And a lot of carpenters applied. It was becoming a fight. I, I came to my friend before you. I did this for you. I have isolation. I have group. Let me do it. 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 And I'll give the job out of about seven of them. We do ten. 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 When they finish doing it, and I'll package their money and put excess. Only one of them came back. I said, Daddy, this money is more than what I did. That's how I eliminated all the others. Only that honest one was doing the work. And they were complaining, why are they giving everything to this man? When you lie, you debar your own blessing. You can lie by carrying rumors. Rumors promoted by gossip. You were not there. You did not see it. And yet, you are lying. You didn't see it. You were not there. Telling lies. You can lie by flattery. Somebody has done something that is not good. He sang a song in a bad way. And he said, wonderful singing. Wonderful singing. Very nice. That is a lie. You can lie by slandering people. You can even lie by keeping quiet. Did you take it? You didn't say one word. No, yes. You didn't say yes. You didn't say no. It's lying. You are still lying. That's why. You need to listen to this my statement very well. I know the tragedy of it before we start praying. No man has a good memory to be a successful liar. One day you will forget that you have lied before. Lies must have clues on. But truth is very naked. Lie is a cripple. It will always need a second lie to keep it standing. A half truth is a whole lie. Then before you say you are deceiving others, the first person you have deceived is yourself. If you add to the truth, or you subtract from the truth, it makes you a liar. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on his shoes for you to catch it up. A lie may take care of the present, but it has no future. What the Bible calls sin, sin has many keyholes, but it's a lie that fits into all the keyholes of sin. Yes, it's a lie that fits into it. That's why people who do a lot of kneeling in prayer, they don't lie. Most of those who lie and lie and lie and lie and lie, they are not prayer warriors. If you are a prayer person, immediately you get on those knees. And you say, Father, in the name of Jesus. The only thing you say, son, you are a liar. What do you want to do about this? And I tell you this one truth. Sometimes, how well you sleep depends on how little you lie. Exaggeration is the twin brother of falsehood. The truth may hurt you. But lying is an agony. When a lie is deliberate, it is a sinful heart. And don't pursue a lie in your life. Leave it alone. If it's a lie, don't run after it. Leave it alone. Because that lie will run its step into death. This is the problem with it, beloved. That the spirit of lying. 
Because it's easy to tell one lie, but difficult to tell only one. You tell more. You tell more. You tell more. And that does not help at all. A half truth is a whole lie. Human beings are born as truthful people, but most of them die as liars. You are a black woman. Now you have bought creams to deceive people by changing your complexion. You are a liar. You are black, you are not light. Why, why do you want to present yourself as a light person when you are black? No liar. Listen to me. No liar ever prospered for a long time. And lying is like drunkenness. You are always recovering from one before you go into another. A lot of people tell lies when they think that the truth is dangerous. Instead of telling somebody simple truth, I am sorry I cannot come because I am I have other plans. I have other plans. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I cannot come now. I can't come now. I'm tired. Instead of telling somebody, I'm really angry for what you are saying. Uh, anything you say is okay. Uh, anything you say is okay. Tell us, tell somebody, I'm very sad with what you are doing. Uh, you say, no, nothing. I just have a small headache. That's why I'm not smiling. That's why I'm not talking. Well, that's not. It's very sad. Instead of telling a man or woman, sorry, I am no longer interested in this relationship. So, uh, I'm going to travel for a long time. You understand? I'm going to be away for years. So if you don't hear from me, don't worry. Instead of saying, I'm not interested. Instead of telling somebody, uh, I'm busy with what I'm doing now. I can't come to this ceremony. So, the Lord asked me not to come out. They gave you a book. You have not even opened one page. I said, have you finished the book? Say yes, yes, I'm on the last chapter. But else you have not started at all. It is a very strange matter. That people will be copying the devil and working for the devil. For the tragedy of it all. This is where we need prayer. In Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21. It didn't say whether you are a pastor, whether you are a bishop, Superintendent, chorister, usher, son, the school teacher, who couldn't be bothered who you are. Bible has no respect for who you are. In Revelation 21, verse 8, Revelation 21, 8, said, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. Let's look at it again. On the first floor, the fearful. Second floor, unbeliever. Third floor, abominable. Fourth floor, murderers. Fifth floor, homongers. Sorcerers. Sixth floor, I don't know, seventh floor. Then on the ground floor. Of all liars. The deepest part of hellfire. So you need to repent if you have been lying. You need to consciously decide that you must tell the truth. You need to depart from a life of falsehood. What do you want to do? What do you think you can achieve with a stolen identity? A stolen identity. What do you think you will do with that? What do you think you can do with that one? It's a serious matter. Very, very serious matter. And I don't want you to keep your prayers away from being answered. You should not lie. Because the Bible says the truth shall set you free. You should not lie. Because it's embarrassing when you are caught. You should not lie. Because people keep lying, it becomes a habit which is difficult to break. You should not lie. Because it makes Satan your father. You should not lie. Because no one believes a liar, even when they now tell the truth. You should not lie. Because you, you damage others with your lies. You should not lie. Liars never get away with their lives. You should not lie. Because people respect honest people, not liars. You should not lie. Because you might have forgotten what you lied about before. 
I used to invent another line to cover up that one. The tragedy of it is that they go to the ground floor of Empire. The tragedy of it is that the Bible says in Proverbs 12 that they shall be hated by God. And that it will bring negative consequences to their life. I agree that telling the truth may be tough. You can't please anyone, everyone. But you need to stay in the arena of truth. Woman. Not on that mountain. Or on this mountain. But the time is coming. And now is. That they that worship you. Must worship him. In spirit. And in truth. Are you a truthful person? Are you lying before your children? Are those children knowing that your mommy as liars? Are you a hypocrite before them? Then it's a serious matter indeed. There's a phenomenon I'm noticing now here. And it's a very sad phenomenon. We took a census of the youth church. 70% of those who are there now, their parents are not here. They are not here. Only 30% have their parents coming here. Many parents who are here, the children are lost. Because they have not brought Christ into their home. The children see the hypocrisy they practice at home. They see the lack of love inside the place. They are not interested in what their father and their mother are doing. And it's a very serious phenomenon. You have children of those who have been coming here for years. The children are prostitutes. There are all kinds of, there are all kinds of things outside. Some are experts in, cl- in like night club and things like that. And the parents have been coming here for years. Your children refuse to follow into your place of worship. That's a problem. That's a problem. You are not bringing that Christ home. And you are talking against people. You are spoiling before the children. Spoiling church people before them. Gossiping about church. Gossiping about the people. And as the children gather that, they find that the place you are going is not a place of following the Lord. We hold you responsible. We have created facilities for them. This is why we have to be very, 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 very careful. Very, very, very careful. Some are saying, I don't know. Why is children and his I don't know. How many of you parents here have gone into three days try fast because of your child? No. Breakthrough. School fees. The prayer you should pray for them is more important than the school fees you are paying. It's a very serious matter what we are talking about this morning. And I want you to, to, to be honest with yourself and with the Lord. The Lord wants sincerity of heart. Bow down your head now. Say, my Father, deliver me from the lies I'm telling myself, from the lies I'm telling others. Talk to the Lord now. It's a very serious matter. A tragedy of lies. Amen. Rise up on your feet now. And I want you to cry unto heaven in this strong prayer. Strong prayer. And if you love yourself, it's better for you to pray it loud. Yourself. My Father, have mercy on me and deliver me to the uttermost. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and call on the Father to have mercy on you and to deliver you to the uttermost. name we pray. Father, we thank you for a time like this. We thank you because you have ordained a place for us. And you said, no unclean thing shall go there. You said, and there shall be a way. A way of holiness. So the unclean shall not move there. So by the way fear us. No fools will not err there. Father, we come before you today. Anything you need to adjust in our lives. Anything that heaven needs to change in our lives. Anything the, the heaven needs to dismantle in our lives. So that we can be the kind of people you want us to be. 
Father, arise and deal with them now in the name of Jesus. As we go into this month of favor, let your favor envelope your people. The Lord blesses you from Zion. And make his face a shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. In the name of the Father. The name of the Son. And the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.